And when we go to use, we should get the effect and the sound, and we do. Hey there, I'm your host, Lesawi, and this is part 17 of our inventory series. In today's video, we'll be creating the use item function. So that said, let's begin. Let's start by creating the mechanism to pick up with our hotbar. So for that, we'll go into the content drawer. We want to open up the inventory system, the item data, and the item data component. And let this load. So in here, we have the pick up function. So we need to modify this a little bit. So we still want to check if the inventory is valid, but what we'll do is I want to check if this is a hotbar first. So hotbar. So if we have space, if it's valid, we'll pick it up. And on success, then we'll destroy the actor or the owner. If it's false, we then want to do something similar. Let's copy that. On false, oops, we'll go in here, check if this is an inventory component. We can drag this in here as well. So, so that's that. We'll pick up item data, item quantity is the same. And at the very end, we just want to this, destroy the actor, which will get this owner. Okay, so let's compile and save that. Next, let's create a new function called check inventory. In here, we want to have an input, which is going to be an actor. So inputs, target, actor. And we'll do get component by class. And we want to check our inventory component. Do is valid. And if our inventory component is valid, we'll do find matching slot, which is a function we're calling from our inventory. We want to then get the item data to break, and we're interested in the item ID, so wrong name. And let's click on this and hide. Next, let's go ahead from success and do a not boolean. We'll come out of not, we'll do a return. And the idea is that this will say not success. So we've been not successful. And let's compile and save. Back inside of our event graph on the pickup item event, we want to go ahead and take this check inventory function we just made, and we want to implement it into this system. So let's take everything, move it a little bit back. And after the hotbar has been checked, I just want to see we want to check if the items uh, are matching or not. So this will, the target will come from the interactor. Just double click on that to reroute it. We'll get a branch after not success. And on true, we go in here. Let's also move this point there, to make it more clear. And on false, I want to go into the is valid on the inventory component like that. Okay, so let's compile and save that. Let's go ahead and give this a quick test now. So if I hit play, and I go to pick up items, they should appear in my hotbar. They do, but we're never actually updating the hotbar in here. If I move it with the middle mouse button, they do. Okay, so middle mouse again, and it updates. So we need to update the hotbar. So to update the hotbar, we want to go into the inventory system, our inventory component, and let's open up the pickup function. And just before we return on both cases, we want to update this uh, inventory that has picked up this item. So let's go to the event graph on the side, grab the update inventory event, and on completed, we just plug this in before. And there we go, and once more up here. That should do it. So let's compile and save and let's see, play again. And it works. So that's pretty cool. Can I move this stuff around? Can I split? We can't split just yet. Okay. I can move to hotbar. Move. Okay. Nice. 
Next, let's go back into our inventory component. And we want to go ahead and create a new function called use item. Use item. All right, so for this, we are going to need an index. So let's change this to be an index of type integer. And we want to get a copy. So get the item slots, get a copy of this index there. And we want to split this open. Promote you to a local underscore item ID. And the same goes here, local underscore item quantity. And let's log them into the execution. Next, I'll grab a sequence. On one, we'll update the inventory. So let's grab that. And here then, I want to check if the local item quantity is equal to one. Now, if that's the case, that means it's our last one. So we'll plug this into the condition on this branch. On true, what we want to do is we want to grab our add to new slot function. And the item quantity and the item ID are going to be nothing. And we can get the index because we have it as an input on this function itself. This can go untrue, like so. And after that, we want to spawn in this actor. So for that, we'll go ahead and create a new function called get drop location. We can make this a pure function. Let's do get owner. We'll do get actor location. We'll do get actor forward vector and we'll multiply this by a random unit vector in cone degrees. Now this angle is my preference, I do 55 degrees and we'll multiply this by a float. So right click on this bottom pin, do two float double or single precision, doesn't matter. And for this value, I'll set it to like 120. We want to then add this to our origin. So plus this, and we can return and this as the location. Return value, we'll name it location. And like so. And we're good. So let's compile and save. Back inside of the use item function, we then can go ahead and do spawn actor from class. Now, this is the effect I want to play. So, what we'll do is we'll get the local item ID, we'll get the item, get item sound effects. We want to get item data. And we'll break this open. Now, if we have any effects in our database, they'll play on this location. So effects to break. We have item effect, plug that in there. Close that. So that's that. We can also hide this. And for the sound effects, I want to break this open. And we want the use um, sound effect. So play, play item sound effect function use and hide all of those don't need them and this will go at the very end let's move you up okay so something like that in the code up a little bit and let's compile and save oh so for the spawn actor um we need a location so let's split this and get get drop location in there like so and let's then try again, compile, save, and we're good. On false, we'll go ahead and create a new function called update slot. Now in here, I want access to the index and the item quantity. And we'll do get item slots and get a reference, not a copy. 
So we want a reference of this. Um, so that represents this item we're getting. So this will go into the index and do break. And we want to get the item quantity and subtract one from it. So we'll do this item quantity here. Get item quantity. And we'll then do set members. So out this pin, do set members item slot. And click on this and do a drop down on the default category and select item quantity to be visible. And then plug this in here like that. This goes in the execution and we can hide the item ID. Let's then compile and save. Back inside of the use item function again, on false, we'll simply get the update slot like this. Item quantity we want to be set to one. The index is the same index as here. And then at the back, we just want to plug in to spawn actor again. Let's compile and save. Next, let's open up the inventory system folder UI, and we want to open up the item tool widget. So let's open that. And if we go to the event graph, we want to create a new function and let's call this check use. So we want to get the item ID do get row and plug in our item data. We'll break this open and check if the item category is equal equal enum to either weapons or we'll do another one which will be apparel and we'll just say or boolean for that this can go then into if we grab our button use and do a get what's it called get text um get text underscore text is what i called the variable there um We'll do set text and then this can do a select text. So we have an option and this is the wild card in here or the condition. And then A is going to be called equip and B we can call use and hide that. And I'm using this function. Let's see in a second what's up. So let's um, then do a return because I want to know if this is true or not. So we can just go off or in here like that and call this the return value. That's fine. So let's compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and create a new function called on use. So in here, I want to get the check use function we made. Plug it in. We'll get a branch. And if we're true, what we'll do is we'll do a print string because true is going to be equip, right? So in here, what we'll do is I'll say can't equip yet. Exclamation point. And we'll just do return or not return. Remove from parent. Because we want to close this uh, widget after we've used the item or equipped it and then on false we want the inventory component and do use item again index can come from in here somewhere yeah we got the index and again remove from parent and let's compile and save next we need to update our on action clicked function so click on that and we have use so for use we go on use Plug that in then, compile and save. Next, let's go into the inventory folder and open up the item effects folder and the item effect underscore base actor. So open full blueprint and in here on event begin play, when we spawn this in, I want to first of all add in a component, which is our item data component. Get that and we'll do get item data. We'll break this open and do get row. 
the table comes from here and we'll break this open. Oops, let me just select the manually then. I don't know why that happens, but here we go. And then I want to get the effect to do a break on that. I can hide everything in here. And here we then got the text and the actual effect. So we can print string on the screen. What's happening? Testing purposes as well. Uh, that's good. And then we can do spawn emitter. What is it called? Um, Hit actor location, spawn emitter at location. There we go. This goes into location. For the emitter template, we need a particle system that our effect, item effect structure does not have. So we need to create one. So let's go into our content drawer, open up the item data, open up the S underscore item effect. This is the structure. And in here, we'll add a new variable called the particle effect. And let's just make this our particle system like so. Save that. If we go inside, this should be in there. If it's not, let's just uh, refresh and then it should be. Plug that in. Hide what's unnecessary. One more thing we want to do in here is let's click on the item data component and go into the data table. For the row name, I'll set this to be health potion. Now, of course, go ahead and create children for this and set it to health potion and so on. But since we're just doing the health potion, I'll do it there. Compile and save. Next, let's actually go into our data table and set some of this stuff up. So let's save that, open it up. And if we click on our health potion, E do, do, do. where do we have this effects? There we go. Effect text restores 50 health item effect. So we could have something in there as well. And particle effect will do. Let's just do an explosion. So my Unreal just crashed, but let's go ahead and hit play. And this should work now. I would hope so. So let's pick this up. So here we get our equip option. Nice. We get the use option, and if I equip, can equip yet. If we use, it says zero, and yes, we've used one, but we don't get the print string. So let's see why that is. So, one more thing I forgot in the data table is that on the item effect, we need to give this some type of actor, otherwise, the explosion and the text won't spawn in in the first place. So, for this, we can just give it the base effect. So now if we hit play, we should be able to go ahead and pick our stuff up and then test if we can equip and equip yet. Perfect. And our health potion. There we go. It's a zero and the shaders are preparing. So I'm assuming, yeah, it spawns in the effect. So it's working, but we don't have any sound. So let's go add some sound. So my reason for not having any sound is I simply don't have it plugged in on my data table for the potion. So let's do that. We'll do potion. We have our use pickup. Potion drop. Potion move. And then potion use. Save that. And let's play again. Let's see what happens. There we go. Sound happens. And we use it. Nice. So this is it for the episode. In the next video, we'll be creating the item slider. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like. And as always, happy developing.